and Jim. Welcome back to another Meteorology Monday. Okay, I know it's not currently hurricane season, but this interesting fact is like so bizarre that we, we, we have to make a video on it. You we know? had to. In the <laughs> we, middle of winter, we had to do we this. We have to do this. Oh, you know what? After the year that we've had, I wouldn't be so absurd if we had a Cat 5 next week. <laughs> you know what? It's possible. Anything's possible <laughs> at this point. So, based on that, today we are talking about can you throw a nuclear bomb into a hurricane to make it disappear? Is that a thing? Why do people talk about it? Why is it always brought up, you know? That's right. Let's debunk it today. Before we get started, if you like what you're seeing, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below so you never miss another Meteorology Monday. On to the video. Okay, here we go. You're just off the coast. You got this big old hurricane. Could be Cat 3, Cat 4, and somebody has the idea, you know what? Let's weaken this hurricane. We are going to send a nuclear bomb toward this thing and drop it right in the middle and disperse it. Why is that not okay? Okay, well, number one, we haven't done it before, so who knows if it's even gonna work, okay? We have no proof that this is actually gonna <laughs> do anything until somebody tries it. But we probably shouldn't try it because you know how hurricanes follow the, the trade winds and the jets and everything, it kind of just like, follows that that whole flow of the whole flow the whole flow yeah will you be releasing all that radiation into the, the, the huge column of air that's just gonna go <laughs> over that spot so instead of having a hurricane hit that state you're just gonna have this giant plume of radiation that's right exactly so if you have a hurricane out over the ocean where it's not bothering anybody dropping the bomb in it is it's really not affecting anybody at that point but it's an opportunity to, to weaken it if it does that, and we'll get to that in a minute. But if it's closer to a landmass uh, where there are people living there and you drop a bomb in there, now it's you got a radiated hurricane or a radiated storm that's going to move yeah. over. The rain is coming down. It's irradiated. It's just, mm, yeah. Not no, a good situation. Not a good solution. No. But, I mean, let's, let's think about this. I mean, obviously there's the logical yada yada radiation. But let's, let's go into a little bit more of the scientific side of why this might not exactly work. So by the time that you're ready to drop a nuke on a hurricane, it's obviously like a big threat to wherever it's gonna hit, right? So it takes a while for a hurricane to build up to that. By the time it gets to a Cat 3, Cat 4, Cat 5, and it's like, oh, this is gonna be a bad situation, it's probably pretty close to land. And if it's not close to land, it's probably pretty underdeveloped. For the ones that are fully developed, I have a statistic here on how much heat energy, what we call like the amount of energy a hurricane has and the amount of energy that we would need to put back into it to stop it. The amount of energy, if you read off my little list here, quoting the website that I'll link down below, a fully developed hurricane has the heat energy release rate the same as 10 megaton nukes exploding every 20 minutes. That's a lot of energy. That's a lot of energy. That's like, that's an insane amount of energy that you would have to come up with. And even if we could get that amount of energy and throw it into the eye of a hurricane, a bomb when it goes off, yeah, it has a high burst, it has a big burst of high pressure, but once that shockwave disappears, the high pressure's gone. You're not putting anything there, you're just kind of, the time frame, yeah. is, it's very temporary compared to the life right. of the hurricane. Yeah, so it would be a split second compared to the life cycle of this hurricane. It might do something for 30 seconds, but it's not really going to change the overall and, situation. And thinking about this part too is, you know, when the, the nuclear bomb goes off, what is its uh, radius in right. which you know that that concussion blast or, or whatever it is goes out but typical cat 3 cat 4 hurricane could be hundreds of miles across but you know when a nuclear bomb goes off it's not hundreds of miles across right. so it is not only temporary in uh, time but in space, space as too. well because it's going to cover a small area versus the size of the hurricane itself so you'd have to drop a lot of them all over the place all at the same time and even then it would still only last for a short amount of time that's right and we we're talking about radiation about one now yeah. you're talking radiation about many now there's so much radiation it's like <laughs> ah! 
<laughs> a spinning vortex of radiation. <laughs> well, now you've just made it mad. Now it's yeah. going to destroy your state and nuke the planet. That's it's just, right. <laughs> you're not like only cut down the bee's nest, but you're kicking it down the hill, too, at the same like time. Sounds like the beginning to a dystopian YA book. <laughs> Hunger Games, is that you? Quoting that same website again, Normal atmospheric pressure is about 10 metric tons per square meter of air. Just like, that's, that's the normal. Like, here we are today, that's about normal. A hurricane only has about 9 of those, not 10. So it's like a whole metric ton of air per square meter less. Mm -hmm. So very, very, very low might not Might not be much, but it is significant. So a little bit of mathy statistics. To change a Cat 5 down to just a Cat 2, you would need to add about half of a ton of air per every square meter inside the eye of a hurricane, which is the equivalent of about half of a billion tons just of air that you need to put back into the eye of a hurricane. And that air is going to come That's from... Exactly. Where are we taking it from? <laughs> where are we getting all that air? <laughs> and then what happens to it afterwards? It's like, let's borrow some air from here and bear it. But um, the reality is that we don't really have a way of grabbing that amount of air to put somewhere. So... Yeah. So the physics to it, let's, let's put the radiation discussion over to the side for right. a second. The physics to make it happen just isn't there either. It's just, it's not practical. Like a nuclear bomb could, could put a bunch of air there for a small amount of time, but it's going to spread out. And it's the same anywhere in the atmosphere. If you have a low pressure system, eventually it'll even back out. If you have a high pressure system, eventually it'll even back out. That's just what the atmosphere does. That's its entire job. So to be able to pick up air and put it somewhere else that, that strong is just, it's not practical from an atmospheric dynamics point of view. So you might be thinking, wow, if it's so hard to move, you know, half a billion tons of air or whatever into the middle of this Cat 5 hurricane, why don't we just bomb the tropical depressions? Well, on average, there's what, like 80 tropical depressions every year? <laughs> That's right. It might be easier, I mean, it's still gonna be incredibly difficult based off of everything that we've already talked about, but to bomb that many little tropical depressions seems to be a waste of time and money when only what, like five of them turn into major hurricanes every year? Right. On it, average. And, you know, you gotta get it out there safely. Safely. You know, and then you gotta deploy it and make yeah. sure your plane is not anywhere near it. Oh, but yeah, the thing is, point. is that it's not strong. So there's no, I mean, there's a center of low pressure for a tropical depression, but, but there's it's... There's no eye. Yeah, you know, and and again, I think it's more dominated by the trade wind at that point, and it's yeah. kind of broad and disorganized. So it's not really anything. Yeah, so you just be again irradiating a bunch of thunderstorms. Granted, <laughs> it's moving out over the ocean, but you know, if you've got vessels underneath it, if you're yeah. radiating Clear the fish, the I mean, <laughs> no more fish, no more boats. Just... You just irradiate that whole trail that goes from Africa over to the United States and you know the Atlantic Basin we're talking about the Atlantic Basin yeah. here uh, but yeah it's it's um, that's not practical either so we've got not only the uh, environmental impacts we have the actual dynamics on whether it's possible or not and then you have the cost associated with doing that and then yeah. what environmental impacts there are after everything is said and done. So just overall it just doesn't seem like a great solution to a hurricane problem. They do have other ideas and solutions that they've tried, cloud seeding and other experiments that they've tried to weaken uh, hurricanes. Um, I don't think they've been overly successful. We Not haven't heard successful. reports of, hey, no, it just published a study that says we dropped this in the middle of it, and guess what? It went from a Cat 5 to a Cat 2. <laughs> the only thing I know that makes it go from a Cat 5 to a Cat 2 is land. Land. <laughs> or very, very 
very, very cold ocean water. <laughs> cold ocean water. Maybe that's it. We just got strong gotta winds. Dump ice into the ocean. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's why there's no Cat Five hurricanes in Antarctica or in, in the Arctic. Exactly. There you go. It's just too much ice. <laughs> well, right. we don't know for how much longer. <laughs> <laughs> Cat Five hurricanes might make it there someday. Who knows at this point? <laughs> there's penguins raining down everywhere. <laughs> so we talked about dropping a nuclear bomb in a hurricane, and with hurricanes being that big, what about for tornadoes? storms. What about big EF4, EF5 tornadoes? If you dropped a nuclear bomb on one of those things to stop the tornado. All I'm saying is the tornado is going to do a heck of a lot less damage <laughs> than a nuclear bomb to the middle of Kansas. <laughs> a nuclear bomb blast compared to a hurricane, a mature Cat 4, Cat 5 hurricane that's a few hundred miles, 500 miles across, versus a tornadic storm. We'll give it 20 miles across and the tornado is a mile wide. Uh, it's almost like using a sledgehammer to drive a nail into a piece I of wood. I don't, it's, why is that a question? <laughs> like Over a land area that's populated. Hey guys, we have an EF5 coming towards your house, but don't worry, we've got a nuclear bomb in the back of this plane <laughs> and we'll take care of it. That's it's right. okay, don't worry. And you gotta have a fleet of planes because if you've got a major outbreak that's gonna happen from Minnesota all the way down to Texas, you're gonna have to have all these planes in place to drop the bombs for when these storms fire and some storms don't form tornadoes. So do you drop the bomb? Do you not drop the bomb? How about this? Let's just bomb the cold front. It's just like right over Colorado. Let's just get rid of the cold front. <laughs> That's it. That's it. We're going big. We're or going the Gulf big. of Mexico. No moisture, no no front, something. Just, you know, bomb the synoptic scale stuff. You know, if you got rid of the Gulf of Mexico, that would solve a lot of problems, I guess. Did we just solve the weather problem? Just drain the Gulf of Mexico? <laughs> drain the Gulf of Mexico. Where is it going to go? It's the same thing as like, the air, right? <laughs> just pick it up. I'm, I'm sure like the Great Lakes and the Salt Lake and stuff, I mean, we can put some more water in there. Some sort of retaining wall, like east of Miami, down to Cuba, and down into the Yucatan to block yeah. off any of the- like, we'll do the opposite of the Panama Canal. <laughs> That's it's it. Like, bar off the ocean. It's like, nope, and then we'll dump ice cubes in the Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> Just keep this really cold so nothing can happen. That's right. And eventually, polar bears will move in too. Exactly! Oh, we just solved global warming too! There we go. That's, That's it. it. Noah, hire us. Interview done. <laughs> <laughs>